The right to bear arms is guaranteed by the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution. But what does it mean? Open carry and concealed weapons, that's the topic for this episode of Focus. Thanks for joining me, I'm Wes Allen. At the Focus Roundtable today are Lieutenant Elmer Horn, Douglas County Sheriff's Department, Captain Brent Dever of the Douglas County Sheriff's Department, and Renee Moore from Douglas County Probate Court. Guys, thanks for coming in. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. What does right to bear arms mean? Um, essentially, it's guaranteed under the Constitution, uh, under the Bill of Rights, and the Second Amendment guarantees the uh, the people in the United States the right to bear arms, to be protected, um, and to own arms. Okay. What what are arms? Uh, firearms or weapons. So to be secure in those weapons. Okay. Can anyone own a gun? Yes, as long as they're not prohibited by law. Okay, and what prohibits them by law? There's several different things that can prohibit someone by law from uh, owning a firearm. The, the one major one that really trips everybody up is uh, a convicted felon. That was one of the first ones that they established in law that keeps from somebody from uh, owning a firearm. If they've been a convicted felon, they, they cannot own a firearm legally. Okay, how do... <coughs> I mean, how do we find out who is a convicted felon? Do we have to uh, register all of our guns? Well, that would be my job. When you come in to get a permit to legally carry a weapon, I would do a background check on you to see if you have any kind of felonies or anything like that. Okay, but do I have to register all of my guns? No. No, no we don't have a, a state registry like a... Uh, you would your car, you know, you have a VIN number and your, your license plate that registers yeah. your car, law enforcement can run those and it comes back to who that car belongs to. We don't have that in Georgia. Um, you don't have a state registry that all weapons are registered to one person or the, the, that way you don't have to register your weapons. But however, if you do buy a new weapon from a, uh, a um, for example, if you go to Academy Sports and buy a handgun. Okay. They are going to register that handgun with the ATF that you buy that, okay? No matter uh, what I buy. No matter what you buy, they will register new purchase weapons through the ATF <coughs> or the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms uh, Administration. And they register those new purchases. So if we do get a firearm in, the, uh, in a crime or in something that we need to try to find out who's the owner of, we can go back and track the original purchaser of that weapon. But as we all know, People buy and sell guns on the open market all the time, and they're not required to, to uh, uh, register those weapons. So therefore, we go to that person that originally bought it, and then they may say, well, I sold it to this person. So it's always a good idea to get you a bill of sale when you sell a weapon. That way, you, you have a paper trail of where it went. Okay, but you just said that all of our guns don't have to be registered. No, let me, let me interject for one second, Wes. Also, um, part of that is, there is partial gun registration and that deals with the National Firearms Act of 1934. Um, weapons that are under that criteria, which would be machine guns, short barreled rifles and silencers, those have to be registered with the ATF and they also have to have a $200 tax stamp paid per item. So in other words, if I bought a short barreled rifle, okay, I would be required to register that with the ATF during that purchase and then I would pay a $200 tax stamp. And then if I bought a silencer for that weapon, I would have to register the silencer with the ATF and pay a $200 tax stamp on the silencer. Okay, 1934, this kind of sounds like out of Al Capone and Dillinger and machine yes. guns. Yeah. <laughs> yes. well, that's exactly this is where right. this law came from. That's, exactly that's right. That's where it came from. Oh, no, machine that. guns and stuff like that have to be registered through the ATF. Okay, so they're registered through the ATF what does your registration do in probate court? Person. You're registering the person, not the weapon itself. So I'm checking the person to make sure that they are able to carry that weapon. They are, you know, backgrounds are checked and fingerprints are checked and mental statuses are checked and that sort of thing. Okay. So you're registering the people and you're checking them through a national registry? Absolutely. And state registries, things like this? Correct. Cool. Okay. Are mentally incapacitated people? They're not able to carry. But are they registered? This is new. 
to me. Well, when they're not registered per se, but when I pull a background check, if you have been institutionalized or if you have oh, a court um, declaration or correct, something like that, there there is going to be something that comes back and says, you know, we need to go further. We need to to do a further check on if this person. If you've been addressed at court as say mentally incompetent to stand trial, things of that nature, correct, because temporary of, insanity, because of some kind of a diminished capacity. Okay. But you were saying that a minute ago that all guns do not have to be registered. No. So personally owned guns that you have uh, buy and sell on the open market, uh, trade shows, Craigslist. You inherit guns from your inherit. family. Okay, those do not have those to be registered. Those do not have to be registered. Okay. Now, what if I want to take those gun that gun out of my house? And take it somewhere. Yeah, if you want to carry open, or you want to carry in public in Georgia, you have to go to the probate court and apply for a carry weapons carry permit. Okay, Renee, what's that? <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what we've been going over. But absolutely, you're going to come into the office. We're going to do an application. The application fee is thirty-one dollars here in Douglas County. Uh, we're going to do a background check make sure everything is done, send you out to do your fingerprints because Douglas County doesn't have our own fingerprint machine yet. yet. We're working on that to make it a little bit more convenient. Um, but we do get the fingerprints back. We do all the extensive background checks on everybody just to make sure that that everybody in Douglas County is taken care of and, and safe. So and then in three to five weeks you should get your permit and that will give you the ability to carry concealed. Okay, what does carry concealed mean? Well, carrying concealed obviously is when you conceal a weapon or a firearm, uh, normally with your clothing or something of that nature. Um, but to get back to that previous question, Wes, also remember that the weapons carry license is not required for your home, uh, your car, or your place of business. So if the car is registered to me and I have a firearm, mm -hmm. uh, I don't have to have a weapons carry license to have that, that weapon in my car. However, if I want to ride in Lieutenant Horn's car, okay and I want to bring my weapon and I don't have a weapon carry license I would need his permission uh, to have that weapon in his car say if we were stopped or something along those lines I would have to have had his permission it can't be unbeknownst to him that I was concealing a firearm uh, on my person and he had no knowledge that I was riding in his vehicle okay now we're not talking about in your role as law enforcement you were talking about in your role as citizens, citizens. 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 Okay. citizens. If so I, if you were going to conceal, now exactly what does concealed mean? You said in your clothing, does that mean in a holster or does that mean visible or not visible? Right, used to Georgia had a concealed weapon law, uh, but that was done away with, so now it is okay to conceal weapons. Okay, what's the difference between concealed weapons, carrying a concealed weapon and open carry? The best way I can explain it to you is uh, is to show you. Okay. okay. This is open carry, where you can see the weapon. Okay. Everyday business, you see the weapon, it's visible. Uh, there's nothing covering or, or concealing a weapon. Okay. Uh, the concealment would be to where it would hide the weapon, where it would not be in sight. So okay. Yeah, say a holster in a pocket. Uh, or an ankle holster, ankle holster or somewhere under your shirt, your clothing, um, under your arm, you know, just wherever you would you would have a holster that would fit that would do that. Okay. And in Georgia, you can carry concealed and you can carry openly uh, with a permit that yes. they have received from through our probate court here. Do probate courts have this responsibility statewide? Yes. Okay, so it is the probate court that does gun Of your gun county of residence. Yes. Of your can county yes, of you residence. You have to apply right. within the county that is on your driver's license, and we make sure that everybody understands that when they come in, we're going to ask them, is your driver's license current? Okay. If it's not their current residence, then we send them out to change their address because what's put on the weapons license now is there for five years. Okay. Unless they change any laws, there is no way. And that's no what one looks like. Okay. There's no way to change your address. So when they go in to buy firearms from Gables or, you know, wherever, then 
their driver's license is going to say one address, their permit's going to say another, and they're going to say, hmm, you're going to need some more information. Bring us, you know, voter registration or current bills or, you know, whatever they ask for. I'm not sure exactly what they ask for, but if there's two different addresses, they're going to give them a, not really a hard time, but they're yeah. going to have to prove where they live. Where they live and, and do that. Okay, your Georgian weapons carry license, that's Elmer's, um, looks very much like a driver's license. And it's changed. Um, Recently, it used to be a, uh, a card that was laminated that was very easy to replicate. And Georgia went to this uh, weapons carry license so it couldn't be replicated as easily. It's got holograms and things, some uh, security features on the card to keep you from replicating it as well. And, uh, and, and you know, in the permit, <clears throat> be able to carry open or concealed. It doesn't matter, you know, either one in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Um, the same license same applies, license applies it, for it, both because Georgia is not an open carry state. Uh, there is a, uh, a couple of states that are open carried where you don't need a license to carry openly and Georgia is not one of those. Okay. Uh, and so it doesn't matter if you're carrying openly or concealed, if you're going to carry in public you've got to have one of these. Okay. The only place you can't carry without one of these is your home or place of business or place of business. You own the business. Uh, you can carry there at your, your, your place of business if you own the business or anywhere in your vehicle as long as you're eligible to receive, get a permit. Okay, so and you have and to be eligible. And those the things we were talking about right. on, on doing that, okay. And right. uh, eligible to get a permit or if you're on a hunting or a fishing or sports shooting event where you have written permission to be there and you have a valid hunting or fishing license. That's what I say, don't you have to have a license? To yes, you that? have to okay. have a valid hunting or fishing license in order for that to happen. Okay, on open carry and concealed weapons, are there certain kinds of guns that can that you cannot get an open carry or concealed weapon license for? No. Okay. They're all covered. They're all covered. Okay. Right. As long as you, like Captain Dever said earlier, as long as you, or if it's one of those weapons, say an automatic weapon, a machine gun, mm -hmm. uh, silencer, or, or certain, it has to like be registered. Shot off shotgun, right. short barrel rifle, the short ones barrel that, rifle, that kind short of barrel ones, rifle, short barrel shotgun. Right, the ones that apply for the National Firearms Act, though, may, they have to be registered through the ATF, and you have to have that tax stamp along with this. Okay, so you've got your license, and you can open carry or con concealed weapon. Is there any place you cannot carry that gun? Lots. Lots of places, okay. <laughs> Lots of places. But, um, Wes, before we go to that though, I wanna, I wanna bring up something about the weapons carry permit because of the eligibility, you have to be 21 years of age to be able to, to apply for a, a weapons carry okay. permit. But Georgia has changed in a new law where if you're 18 years old, and you have proof that you've completed basic training in our armed services, okay. one of our branches of the armed services. Which has a lot of weapons training in exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. Makes sense. It provides proof that you know, you're actively serving from the armed forces or you've been honorably discharged, then you can apply for a care weapons carry permit. Okay. Uh, and that's, that gives uh, the, women and, the men and women of uh, our state that go out and fight for our freedom, for these rights that we have mm -hmm. to do this, it gives them the right also to bear arms uh, before they turn 21. Okay, and but normally if they have not done armed if they services, yeah, they have not done armed services, then it's, then it's, it's 21, 21 years, years old, old. And, yeah. and doing that. Okay. Right. Now going back to that, if they are in the armed services, they've been discharged or, or whatever. We mm -hmm. do have a lot of people in the armed services that are stationed, say, in you know. Wyoming or, or wherever, mm -hmm. but they live here. All they have to do is make sure that they're, they have those orders with them when they come in to apply, okay. and they have their current pay stuff showing that they are active duties. Um, if they're not, if they're dishonor, I mean honorably discharged, then you know bring in those paperwork or so that paperwork. That no. DD two fourteen, right. and, right. and do that and show that, so then they can do that even if they have not turned twenty one. That right. is correct. Okay, got it. And also. I had in here. So we got all sorts all of kind of notes. <laughs> all kind of notes. There's a lot of information here that I'm glad y'all brought notes to keep, right here. keep it all straight. What you got? 1611-137 also uh, in Section A says that you must carry the permit or proof of exemption. So say law enforcement 
or uh, or someone that is exempt from carrying a, from having a carry permit, um, they must carry that uh, proof with them um, at all times. And okay. if they don't, say they get into a situation where they have to prove that they have a permit or something of that nature, where they're committing another, where there's another crime, or they get uh, into a situation where they're they're asked about it, get pulled over, or whatever. Um, be the case, then they must be able to prove that they have the weapons carry permit. If they don't, then that's just like you not having the permit at all until you go to court. Okay, so if, you, if you've if you got it, we're, we were talking about in your car, in your <coughs> home, because you can have it in your home right. for personal protection without a license, exactly. anything else like that, but if you've got it out in public, then you have to be able to produce this. Yes, the law says but now... you were saying that law enforcement cannot just walk up and say, produce your license. Right. Right. If, say, a citizen sees someone uh, walking down the street, walking their dog, for an example, and they have a pistol on their side that is plainly visible for everyone to see, and the person is on the sidewalk walking the dog, uh, well, that is not against the law. Okay, so if a citizen calls us, we have to convey that information that that is not illegal. Okay. Now, if the person had just broke into someone's house, that's a different story. There has to be a crime attached to the reason for checking the people with the guns. Or some kind um, of suspic suspicious activity. That right, would something, that are, some other something that are articulable facts to the officer that would cause the reason to, to actually stop and question the person. Okay. We, let's get back to then where you can and cannot open carry and concealed carry. Okay, we'll try and highlight just a few just of the places. Just a few of them. Just a few. Uh, for example, um, a courthouse would be one example. Um, a government building would be another example. And in the government building, um, it has to be a particular building where ingress and egress is a uh, um, controlled by security personnel or screening personnel, so to speak. Um, obviously, nuclear facilities, which we don't deal with in Douglas County. Um, place of worship, uh, Elmer could carry the exemptions on that if you would. Uh, on a place of worship, um, you have to have the permission from the governing body of the church uh, saying that, uh, that, you, can or that you, you can carry in their church. Okay, okay? So, so it's so right prohibited now, unless they say right. you cannot. And, and I mean, Wes, I want to go ahead and put this out here because we had not had it happen, but I could see this for somebody saying, you know, you can't strap on your gun and go to church and say, God told me that I could wear my gun to church today. It's not the governing body that we're talking about when okay. we're talking about the church, it's, okay? It's not that governing body. Not that governing body, okay? Not the big okay? governing body. Not the overall <laughs> governing body, okay? What we're looking at is the uh, the deacon board, the bishops, the pastor, those, those folks that are in charge of the church of doing the everyday business of that okay. church. That's the governing body that we're talking about that has to give permission for them to be able to carry in that church. Okay, recently I was uh, at uh, Target here on Chapel Hill Road. I was getting ready to go in there and saw a young man getting out of his car and he had on a, uh, a holstered pistol and he was walking into Target. Uh, didn't have any problem with him carrying it. It would just surprise me that he would be carrying a pistol Open. in openly into a Target store. And then the <laughs> same thing in uh, inside a Walmart, I saw a guy mm -hmm. with a strap with a gun on his back pushing a cart in Walmart. It, it's like, it doesn't go together. You're pushing a <laughs> cart and getting, Getting if, laundry detergent. And if Walmart's gotten that bad to shop at, you've got to carry a rifle. Like there's a problem. But that's what we're saying. That, that, as long I, as I, think that's, a, I think that's the message they're trying to convey. And when I say, um, for example, Georgia Carry or, or GeorgiaPacking.org, they want you to understand that that's normal. That's law-abiding citizens. They're not breaking the law. No, so I'm, so I'm they want to change. They want to change the public's perception of what people and, and their their view of that's out of the ordinary for you, well, they want you to understand that that's uh, normal. It, it was a shock. Um, no. I, I, you just, I, and, 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 I, and it is, I think, a uh, orientation of the way of thinking. Right. Now, I see y'all quite often, and but you're law enforcement, so you have your holstered gun 
Uh, I work in the courthouse, so we have deputies, and we see that, so there's that orientation, that law enforcement. Well, I can tell you this, we have seen children, and, and even mine when they were young, you know, their, their daddy is a, a police officer, and he is used to, you know, seeing that hoster on the side, there's always a gun. So when we would walk into somewhere, in like the courthouse, and there's some that do wear guns and some that don't, you know, my child would be like, why is he wearing one? So they make that difference between, right. you know, if they're carrying or if they are not carrying. So it's kind of the same way on the, on the reverse end. In, in reverse end exactly. from that. But I was just, I was, I, like I said, I don't have a problem with it. I think it was just the surprise. Surprise. Well, we, we, when we teach our public handgun class for the, the public at the sheriff's office and we get into this discussion about open and, and concealed carry, <coughs> we recommend people carry the gun concealed out of sight, out of mind, because if someone is about to rob a place or they're about to do bad things to something, to, to that area, and you have a gun that is openly exposed and you're the first target, that's their first threat. And, and this is also interesting, even um, um, if we mention georgiacarry.org, even on their website, they, in talking about every single thing and every single issue that, that they promote, um, as far as gun owners, gun owners' rights. Uh, a lot of times when you read um, their website, on most every issue they're dealing with, um, they will make, I would say, recommendations or something, and they remind people, remember people vote and public perception. So they, they push for things like, you know, use common sense on a lot of this stuff, um, concealing your weapon, don't, don't be, you know, pushing the limits of the law. Um, yeah, you have in certain areas because if if there is enough outcry over something, people raise an issue and you get voters, voters can change the law just as easily it was changed and I believe it was 2010 when all of yes. this came about. Mm -hmm. uh, and Tim um, Bearden was the representative that pushed this and it changed a lot of our law that took a lot of the gray area out of the law and made it pretty simple that, you know, if you're going to carry in public anywhere you carry, you've got to have the permit. Um, and then, you know, it, it covers long gun and, and uh, pistol as well. Hey, you, you brought up a minute ago, uh, if you have it in your car. Yes. And uh, you're driving down the road and your tail light is out or something like, like mine was last week. I didn't get pulled over. I went <laughs> straight to get it fixed. And somebody let me know. But you can get pulled over. And you have um, a gun in your car, and you pulled over by a law enforcement officer. What should you do? A, a good common practice, if you have a weapons carry permit, if you'll hand that officer your permit with your license, that kind of lets that officer know there's a weapon in there and that you're legally justified to carry that weapon okay. uh, in public outside of that car. But the law states you can carry it anywhere in your vehicle without a permit. So if you want to tell that officer the weapon's there or not, it's up to you. That is totally up to you. But I do tell you this, most of our officers will ask, do you have any weapons in the car? And if they ask that question, you need to tell him that weapon's in there. Okay. Is because it, are of, you obligated to tell him the If he asks there? that question, yes. You're okay. obligated at that point because what's going to happen is if in, in the course of his investigation of that traffic stop, he finds out that weapon's there that you didn't tell him about, now we have deception. And then when we have deception, in our eyes as law enforcement, you're hiding something for some reason. And, you know, not everybody is, but that, you know, the 3% of the world that we deal with on a daily basis uh, that are law, uh, lawbreakers, they're trying to hide something from us when they be dece deceitful. So when we see the deceitfulness, now we're looking for the crime that they, why are, the, why are they hiding this? Why didn't they tell me it was there? Are they a convicted felon? Are there drugs in the vehicle? Or, you know, what, what are they trying to hide? And why are they not telling me this weapon's there? Okay, well, I've always been told that if I get pulled over by a law enforcement officer to roll down the window, put your hands up on the steering wheel. And, and it, then that way, the law enforcement officer knows, okay, got nothing to hide, and then he will ask the questions yep. and, and go like that. So at that point, I should be saying, I have a weapon in the car. If he asks. If he asks, or if I just want to bring it up. If you just want to bring it up, that's fine too. Okay. 
Um, if it's understand, nine, understand this though, Wes, you're under no obligation right. to, to answer that. You have a right uh, to have the weapon in the car um, and is it common courtesy to let an officer know? Absolutely. Do you have to tell the officer that the weapon is in the car? You do not, okay? That is your protected right. Um, just like you have the right to remain silent uh, when you're charged with a crime, okay? So, um, as a good rule of thumb when you're being stopped, um, if, if, say, it's at nighttime, roll the windows down or the windows down where you're visible to the officer, cut an interior light yes. on. But you need to be doing these things as you're stopping, okay? Once you've come to a stop and your window's down, you need to have just your hands, and it's just a, a common courtesy. Quit moving about the vehicle. Ask your occupants if you have other occupants to remain calm. Make sure your radio is down, for example, so that number one, you can hear the officer and the officer can hear you. That's good effective communication when people can hear each other and understand what is being said. Um, at the same time, just what you mentioned, put your hands at the 10 and 2 position or somewhere where they're visible. Um, if you have a weapon in the car, Think about these things, and as a common courtesy over the years of doing thousands of traffic stops, the people who have weapons carry licenses are very proud of those, and generally they love producing that with a mm -hmm. driver's license, yes. okay? Um, so that, that's just that group as far as, as this a general kind of rule, normal that, that's, a normal, that's a normal practice. If you don't have a weapons carry license, but you have a gun in a car, there's no need to be worried about it as long as you're not a convicted felon or you're not transporting drugs or something like that or you just committed an armed robbery. Just remember, think about things during the stop before you do them. Just be calm. Everybody gets nervous when stopped by the police, but there will be uh, a time when that level of nervousness goes down because the officer has identified themselves, they've explained the reason for the stop. Um, if they ask for your driver's license and you know your driver's license is in the center console where there is a pistol, explain that to the officer. Let them know. Don't just haphazardly open the center console and reach yeah. where a gun is. Um, because obviously a reasonable person might perceive that as a threat, okay? Um, you may know as the citizen that you're not a threat to the officer. The officer has no idea who you are or what your intentions are. Okay, exactly. so just because you think I'm harmless, they have no idea. They've got to figure it out through the traffic stop. Let me ask you this, because this is just what I have been told over the years. If you do not have a permit to carry, should you carry loaded or unloaded in your car, or does it matter? Why would you carry a paperweight? <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Uh, that's that's, kinda, that's, that's, good that's the individual person's choice <laughs> as far as what they some people <laughs> Some people prefer to have them in the trunk of their car. Uh, some people I've seen traveling to work set them up on their dash. Uh, some people have them in the glove box. They're all over the place. Um, there's uh, some people may have a, a rifle laying in the back seat. We remember all when we were younger. Um, everybody rode around with rifle racks and it was commonplace to get out at the store and yeah. there would be two or three rifles in the rifle rack. You left your windows down, you walked in the store, you came back out, your rifles were still there. Not so, the case not today. And, um, so they, have you have to secure your stuff. So, But loaded, unloaded, it's, it's individual preference. Okay. Um, but my suggestion is why would you carry something that's not going to help you? Absolutely. Thank you for all the information that you brought today. We appreciate you coming in very, very much. Second Amendment guarantees your right to bear arms, and I hope we brought a little bit of focus into this subject for you. I'm Wes Talon. Thanks for joining us.